Mr. Robert Rodale is a publisher whose interest in developing environmentally sound farming and gardening systems has influenced American agriculture. Jane Gates of the National Agricultural Library's Alternative Farming Systems Information Center will talk with Mr. Rodale today, and the taped interview will be added to the National Agricultural Library's Oral History Collection. Today is Tuesday, November 21st, 1989. My name is Jane McLean, coordinator of the Alternative Farming Systems Information Center. Good morning. It really morning. is a pleasure to be here and to have a chance to ask you some questions and listen to you talk and put it on record. I was reading about you before I came, and I read where one of your earliest instructors had met Abraham Lincoln. Right. That's quite a connection. Yeah. Do you remember him? The instructor, oh, not yeah, Abraham Lincoln. Sure. He was, <laughs> I don't remember his first name. His last name was Doniker, but he was a uh, combination carpenter and farm person that uh, my father hired. It was 1942. The war was on, and uh, uh, my father could only hire very old men because the other men were all working. Mm -hmm. And uh, and me, I was 12 years old, so this fellow was teaching me farming and other things. And I think he was about in his late 80s, or the very late 80s at the time. He'd have to be. Yeah. But he said that when he was six years old, Abraham Lincoln came through this area on a campaign swing, and his mother held him up, and he shook hands with Abraham Lincoln. So. <laughs> <coughs> now, when you say this area, do you mean right here in Pennsylvania? Yeah, and, and uh, southeastern Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. near Allentown. Emmaus is a suburb of Allentown. Mm -hmm. and, and you've been here all your life? Well, I, I was actually born in New York City, but my parents, I was born in 1930, but my parents moved here in 1930, about five months after I was born, mm -hmm. and I've lived here ever since. And uh, not only that, but I went to school here, in, to college at uh, Lehigh University in Bethlehem. So I've never really, the longest I've ever been away from this area has been, I think, six weeks in uh, 59 years. That's impressive. Mm, yeah. Before we leave that period of time in your life, though, I wanted to ask you about the, the Depression years. Mm -hmm. Was your father's income from the farm? No, he and his brother had uh, started a small electrical equipment manufacturing company making switches and extension cords, connectors, mm -hmm. different parts in New York. And they moved that to Emmaus because uh, there had been a silk industry here, which went oh. bad. And there were a lot of empty silk mill buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, the town offered him one of these buildings free if they would move here, which is the inducement that got well, him that here. It was fairly progressive back yeah. then. And uh, so during the Depression, we I'm sure we didn't suffer nearly as much as a lot of other people. But the business, of course, was terrible. Mm -hmm. and I know there were times when my father couldn't pay the rent. We moved four or five times during the Depression. At the very bottom, we lived in, up on the mountain nearby in a uh, summer cabin that was, had a fireplace in it and, uh, for one winter. Uh, but then when it was all over, my father paid back all the rent that he had, hadn't paid during the Depression. So. Uh, did you always have a garden? Well, we really didn't do much gardening. And uh, my father actually was born in the Lower East Side of New York. And uh, he, he was brought up in an area which is the most, I, I understand, is the most densely populated area ever in the history of the world. Like the Lower East Side, these tenement houses, that people were just sleeping in rows, and uh, and there were a number of stories high, so it was very compact humanity. And but he was interested in plants, and he would go up on the roof and grow plants in pots, and uh, he loved plants in that environment. And uh, he actually had bought a farm in Connecticut in the 20s, 
for ten dollars. We paid ten dollars for the farm <laughs> in in Ridgefield, Connecticut, which is now like the most expensive place. And they, of course, paid it off. They only had it a few years, but uh, they did it. I don't know if they did gardening there, but they they really liked rural life. My father and his brother and my mother and so forth. During the Depression, I don't really recall him gardening, but he he wanted a farm and he bought what is now the uh, organic the original we call it the old farm the organic gardening experimental farm mm -hmm. uh, in 1941 and he immediately went into gardening. But <coughs> what really drove him his interest first of all was health. He he came from a large family and uh, he uh, uh, considered himself sort of the weak person in the family. He, he didn't have good health. Or? He he uh, he did not have. I, it's hard to say. You know what is good health? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really know. But he he was uh, rejected for the the army in World War One mm -hmm. for some. I think for eyesight. He had problems with his vision. Doctors said he had a heart murmur, which today they would, I'm sure, say, forget it. You know, it's a temporary thing. But he felt, in those days, they said, oh, your heart doesn't sound right. They didn't know much. Uh, it, it really was traumatic to him. So he spent his early life experimenting with different health routines, vegetarianism. Uh, he read all the like Bernard McFadden material of the early 20s and 30s. And uh, he tried, he was always trying different diets. And uh, he, uh, he also was publishing magazines. Rodale Press was founded in 1930, the year that they moved to Emmaus. But they published other things, humor magazines. And then he had a series of digests. Uh, Reader's Digest was real big in those area, in those days, so there were a lot of imitators. And he had four or five of the imitators of Reader's Digest, some, one of which was called Fact Digest, which was very uh, successful. But he had a health magazine then called Health Guide, Little Digest. And, uh, but his interest in organic farming came, be he was like primed for health. He said that there's somehow the American way of eating, growing food, is not uh, healthy. Was he encouraged in this by his parents, or was this something that he truly pioneered on his own? Well, he was kind of a loner. His father died early. He never got along with his father anyway. Uh, his mother was alive. She didn't, I don't think she played a part mm -hmm. in this. Uh, he, uh, it's hard to say. I'm sure he had people who influenced him, but it was mostly through his reading and through attending lectures and whatever. Mm -hmm. But he read Sir Albert Howard's yes. book, and uh, he made the statement, which I'll never forget. He said, it hit me like a ton of bricks. It like everything came together. Mm -hmm. uh, here was a man who said, Farming needs to be done in a natural way uh, because it's it's healthier for the environment, for the land, for the crops. Mm -hmm. The crops are better. The food is better. That must have been exciting for him. Well, it, I'm sure it was a very exciting period. And uh, he wrote, I I'd went back not long ago we're getting now to the point of like 50 years of the organic movement in the United States. Mm -hmm. So if organic gardening and farming started in 1942, by 1992 it would be 50 years. Mm -hmm. So I went back and I, uh, I knew he had written about organic farming in Fact Digest before organic gardening. Oh, really? And I found... I thought it was several years before, but actually it was only several months. It was a two-part article in January, February, and the February issue, 1942. He introduced to Americans the idea of organic farming. In Fact Digest. In a magazine called Fact Digest. Okay. And uh, 
it was, if you, that was like his pure thinking there, and uh, it it was from a health perspective. He said mm -hmm. the, the American food system is pesticide residues, too much artificial fertilizer, too much soil erosion, and uh, too much processing. And uh, it was he said if we're going to be healthy, we're going to have to invent a different way to grow and and produce and process our food. Um, then he, uh, I don't know what the reaction to those articles was. I still think there may have been an earlier one somewhere. I haven't given <laughs> up. Uh, earlier than 42? Earlier than 42. I wonder if I, we have that at the NAL. I'll have to check. Well, I doubt if you have the, these are magazines that were printed on newsprint kind of stuff and uh, but the, uh, uh, he read, I know he read Sir Albert Howard's book sometime in the 30s, mm -hmm. the late 30s, so he might have reviewed it. Mm 